I think there's a misconception that games are supposed to be fun, that they're supposed to be an escape. Now don't get me wrong, they certainly can be, but I think they're also capable of depicting more difficult and complicated themes. The darker things that you might play a game like Skyrim or Overwatch to escape. Games that deal with heavy themes are rarely fun, but they can often be cathartic experiences with meaningful messages. A couple of years ago, Danny O'Dwyer did a video on how video games help people living with mental illness. Now in this video, what I want to do is explore how the video games themselves are depicting mental illness and the experience of living with it. Unfortunately, in video games, mental illness is generally presented in its most extreme and unusual forms, and is usually used to offer up entertainment value. It's generally used to enhance a villain's twisted or insane persona, serve as a game mechanic like the sanity meter in horror games, or portray the vulnerability of a protagonist. It rarely mirrors the reality of what mental illness is like for most people. That said, there are games which try and deal with the subject matter in a more realistic way. Spec Ops The Line explores some of the impacts of PTSD by having you experience a brutal conflict and watch the mental stability of your protagonist steadily deteriorate. The platformer Sim shows what it's like to deal with social anxiety by making you move through levels swapping between the white exposed above world, replete with monsters and eyeballs, and the black upside down in which your protagonist can hide. While there's a danger in oversimplifying mental conditions by making a game mechanic out of them, in some cases it works quite well, demonstrating that games can do darker themes justice. One of the reasons I think video games can be an exceptional medium for conveying mental illness is how adept they are at instilling empathy through interactive engagement. Actual Sunlight might be the most painful game I've ever played, but I think it's also one of the most important. It brilliantly conveys the hopelessness, apathy and submission to dysphoria that can develop from major depressive disorder. Actual Sunlight is about the very worst parts of what is considered to be a somewhat common mental illness. Your character, Evan Winter, sometimes simply can't do what you ask him to. He refuses to take the positive option you choose for him, whether that be a lifestyle choice or a hopeful interaction. His mental state has pushed him to a point where he's incapable of it. And I think for some people that's incredibly, however upsettingly, relatable. The game is also full of rhetoric on dealing with depression, as well as struggles with society and identity that pop up when you interact with items in the world. Actual Sunlight is an excellent depiction of what it's like to live with severe depression, and it's illuminating to play for those who don't. That said, it is extremely disturbing in parts and I would advise caution if you're experiencing severe depression yourself. If actual sunlight is about reaching the point of no return where nothing seems salvageable, then the cat lady is about what happens after that point. You play as Susan Ashworth, a severely depressed woman whose only companions are stray cats. She decides to end her life and ends up being granted immortality by a woman who appears to be the embodiment of death. You then play as Susan as she's forced to face life again to find meaning, confront her problems, and attempt to connect with other people. You'll need to keep your mental state in check by doing things that make Susan feel better. In real life, this is called self-care. With every trial, for lack of a better word, that Susan overcomes, she grows in confidence, several times referring to herself as a tough old girl late in the game. Me? Dead? No. No. I'm a tough old girl. Like actual sunlight, the cat lady is honest in its portrayal of a person suffering through depression and suicidal tendencies. Susan is often morose, suspicious, and apathetic. In some ways, the cat lady is about beginning at the point of helplessness and detachment, and then progressively finding a way back to discover things worth living for. The cat lady manages to be hopeful without being cloying or sacrificing its genuine depiction of Susan's illness. And for that reason, I think it's well worth playing for both sufferers and non-sufferers. But the game that made me want to write this feature is The Town of Light, a psychological horror game based around the controversial events that unraveled at a mental asylum in the 1930s. 
It originally launched on PC last year and is now coming to console with more story elements and puzzles. I was initially cautious about how it would handle mental illness as it's built as a horror game, but fortunately that's just a reductive description. The Town of Light isn't so much about the study of an individual sufferer as it is about exploring the broken medical system of the time and exposing the tragic and inhumane way that mental illness was perceived and treated in the early 1900s. The protagonist, Renee, is suffering from depression, paranoia and delusions. The game does a good job of forcing you into the headspace of a tortured girl in a terrible place and it's extremely uncomfortable and upsetting. You're confronted with flashbacks as you walk the halls of the now decrepit asylum and relive the horrors of what Renee endured, both in her imagination and in reality. The only real horror comes from the gruesome history of the asylum and experiencing in first person the degradation of Renee's sanity and well-being as her condition is worsened by a cruel system incapable of treating her. It's not a modern experience of mental illness, but it is well worth knowing about for those who are interested, and the fact that a video game can convey that is pretty damn cool. Last but certainly not least, I want to add that if you or anyone you know is dealing with depression or mental illness, there are places to turn and you are not alone. You can find contact numbers for Lifeline services below. Let me know what heavy themes you think video games handle well or what kinds of things you'd like to see them broach further. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please do find me on Twitter or leave me a comment down in the comment section. I will see you again soon.